everybody. How you doing there? My name is Kenny. You're watching Cast Magazine. We're here with Nelly, hey. Javon. Hi. How you guys doing today? Everything Pretty good? Feeling good. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How was your weekend? Was it good? Um, yeah, it was actually a nice weekend. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of sun. What'd you do? Um, you know, I did a whole lot of nothing. But got a lot of sun. <laughs> okay, a lot of sun. It was yeah. raining this whole weekend, right? This whole... I found the sun. Or Buffalo found the is pretty It was crazy. raining, but not that much. Not that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you do over the weekend, Javon? Work. Javon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start by topic. We'll go by person, topic by topic, whatnot. Each day I'm going to release the podcast each day through Monday. Friday you'll get the full podcast. And uh, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. My name is Kenneth Montgomery. I'm the founder of Cast Magazine. Hi, I'm Janelle, and I am the founder of MG Images. Hi, I'm Javon. I'm also a um, business partner with Kenny <laughs> and also a, a model. All right, Nelly, Nelly, yeah. I'm so happy to have you here and everything. Uh, let's go ahead and start with your topic. Just tell us who are you, what you do, and everything like that. Okay, well, I'm just an ordinary Buffalo girl. Okay. Um, with a couple, you know, hobbies on the side. Um, sometimes me and Javon model together when we get the opportunity. Um, but other than that, I do my art for MG Images and. Um, so far, I only got like one and a half portfolio ready, but um, I like to communicate through art, you know, express uh, culture, feelings, emotions, you know, everything that you know happens on a daily comes out through my work, and uh, I enjoy doing it. You know? Oh, wow. Right, I'm looking at your work and everything like that, and they mm -hmm. look like good paintings and stuff like that. Well, you got marker. Is this marker right here? Actually, this is, this is part marker, part paint. Okay, cool. Yes. All right, so how did you get this? Um, inspiration what inspired you to go ahead and create this um i was going through a lot of you know pain and suffering through my lifetime um, so which fun. happens to everybody <laughs> everybody knows that one time right. where it was the dark time and um i said i wanted to picture myself as a stronger person you know i wanted to picture myself as someone going through and moving on through what i was going through and so i painted images not exactly as myself but you know, as any other woman in the world, and I painted, you know, the steps of moving on and letting go and releasing all that energy that, you know, kept inside and turns into anger and, anger. and sadness. You oh know? my god! Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like you're like sad. Is this a portrait of yourself, or is it? It's not a portrait a... of myself, but it's it it could be, you know, just in the sense because, at some point of my life, I felt like I was waiting for someone you know I was felt like I was laying sitting in the water just waiting for someone to come and you know, something to give mm -hmm. something had to give you know mm -hmm. and um, in the water and my emotions of it all here I am just waiting you know for something to to give and um, through you know through these paintings I just kept going on and going on and and they just kept coming to me as little doodles you know I would doodle here and there and there, you know, and then I would grab those and I would make them into bigger paintings, you know, and I would detail them out more and use them out more and explain them and um, through art at, at least. Um, when I first made these, I actually have um, writing pieces to them, mm -hmm. like poetry, um, letters. Mm -hmm. This one has a letter, a very angry letter. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, it's a very angry, emotional letter. And, uh, it's very personal, this portfolio to say is very personal because it definitely had a lot of me poured into it. Can you just explain to me like well, what's going on in this image? The girl's just s submerged with water around her and everything mm -hmm. like that, but the water looks very shallow. Um, she doesn't look like she's in stress or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about it. Like you said that you're coming from an angry place and everything like that. Just elaborate a little yeah, more on that. Yeah. Cause she does look, she does look all right, content. You know, like she's in the water. She's very secure. She's very secure of herself. You know, she in this in this water. She is a damsel. She's wearing the red dress. She's sexy. You know, her hair is down, but she's waiting on something to give. But she is she is secure for herself. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the waiting on somebody else. You know, like you could do so much. She could only do so much. 
the rest has to come to her, you know. And um, in here, what I feel that she is doing is more just of being there, um, per se, for the other person to come. She is waiting for a return. She is waiting for someone to change their mind, for someone to come around and, you know, realize what the damsel of a woman she could be, you know. And um, I believe that I believe that that's what this shows. I don't feel like it shows like <laughs> too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My art is so simple; it really is, mm -hmm. um, and I'm okay with that. You know, anybody can say I'm an amateur, but no one is gonna tell my story. You Nobody's know? gonna tell your story no but gonna, yourself. <laughs> no one's gonna give it the image, you know, that I'm gonna give it, and no one's gonna. Um, and that's what makes it so unique, you know. So. Mm -hmm. So I know you said it was an angry letter. Why an angry letter, though? Like. <laughs> um, okay, so this portfolio is called Your Other Half. Mm -hmm. It's based on being a man's other half. Um, and in being a man's other half, you are to, you're pretty much somewhat the backbone, the supporter, the comforter. You know, you, there's a lot of responsibility a woman takes with being the man's other half. Mm -hmm. And as you go through the um, paintings here in my portfolio, like you have the painting of the return. Um, so the man returns and they are naked in water to show their, um, the, not only the intensity, but their intimacy and their, um, and their vulnerability in being naked and him returning and coming and her accepting him. You know, it's, it keeps going, it's a story, you know? And then so she begins to flourish. She's a woman who nourishes like Mother Earth, everything around her, everything that touches her can only grow. Yeah, you know? that's pretty deep. So like, right. what made you choose the color palettes and everything for this one and everything like that? Like, was this um, blue streak going through like the female, the female tree, tree body? Like, it's like the virgin. Yeah, yeah. So Earth. the blue is the water. Okay. Water, as in emotion, runs through the woman's body, and so. And running through the woman's body, it you know shows emotion. It shows vulnerability, and how to all of you know that emotion and vulnerability only good things can grow out of, can only flourish. So under her, she has flowers that are flourishing, and her branches are spread it out and stretched out, and there's leaves absolutely everywhere. So she is only there to nourish and protect and comfort and you know and be as a woman can you know be. And nurturing and not only you know to a significant other but to anybody that you know is reflected by this woman oh, wow. you know that's pretty deep yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it can be you know um this I, one kind of reminds me of like uh harley quinn almost but the yin and yang type <laughs> of thing whatnot and when i'm looking at this image right here it tells me sisterhood almost, but there's a darker side to the sisterhood. Like one's taller than the other almost. Like, absolutely. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this play, this um, piece right here. We got these like little wavy lines and mm -hmm. everything like that. Like there's crooked places that's going on. What was going through your mind when you was creating this? When I was painting this, I did think exactly what you did, the sisterhood. Um, I thought of it as loyalty. Mm -hmm. I thought of it as a, a spirit in a woman as well, you know, um, and I colored it by the by the sexy red dress and the classy black dress, you mm -hmm. know, like a, every woman has a sexy red dress and a classy black dress, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and I made, you know, one of one of each sister, one that definitely represents the sexy and one that definitely represents the classy. And then they both have a little bit in each other of each other, you know and a loyalty to each other for being different but same type of women, you know? A woman could be different and relate to another woman, like, strongly and bondly and, you know, as sexy as you are or as professional as you are, mm -hmm. you know, you're still the same and loving and maturing and nurturing as another woman. What would you call this piece? This one I would call, <laughs> uh, let's see. It definitely has a lot of like shimmering as well in it. Um, I would call it spiritual loyalty. Okay. Um, Cause that's what, that's what definitely I, I thought about 
with the wiggly lines in the bottom was this, you know, the soul of the woman, of the sexy woman, the soul of the classy black dress. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Super deep. And um, you know, with every with every story that you have a friendship, a bond, or anything with, you always get your sad, sad moments, mm. like your dire, sad moments, like. I'm going to die sad moments. <laughs> and so that's what this painting represents. This is called The Empty Sea. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about a mermaid who um, is talking to the moon. She's speaking to the moon and she's telling, she's asking the moon, why am I the only of my kind in the sea? It's so lonely, you know? Um, and she talks about how she goes onto the water looking for you and she, you're not there and she goes outside looking for you and you're still not there and you know like she goes to the island and you know she can't breathe and she's looking for you and you know everything that happens um, wasn't supposed to happen that way you know so it wasn't meant to be and she's there's one of the one of my definitely ratings I gotta say that this is the most impressive one of my writings because mm -hmm. when I read it it's definitely the saddest. <laughs> it really is. It's one of the saddest. And um, yes, and so when I took the time of painting this, I did this um, half acrylic, half pastel. Mm -hmm. I gave the sky more of a pastel look because um, it was dark and she's in the water. So, of course, imagine being in the middle of the sea. It's black everywhere. <laughs> yeah, definitely. In the middle of the sea, it's going to be pitch dark. <laughs> so, I didn't want to make it so dark, so I gave it some... Some, some color, yeah, yeah, some colors, some but different the sky depth. is purple. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, and look at the moon. It's like it has half a shadow, half not, you know. Oh, so, wow, look at this one. This one looks fantastic. This <laughs> looks like the Beauty and the Beast. That but. is the ending of the story. <laughs> oh, and wow. that is um, that is when they unite. That is when they finally come together and they become one. And the man grabs the woman and she starts melting into his body and he turns into a lion. And because they're stronger when they are one, you know? So when a woman melts into a man's body and it becomes <laughs> a lion. Yes. So a man is a lion. He has multiple yes. women around him so he becomes a lion, right? Okay, all right, I, I dig that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know it's weird. Um, but I always thought, you know, I was very religious as I grew up, so I always knew about the, you know, once you get married, you become one, and, you know, something similar. And I wanted, I wanted this painting to represent that, but I wanted this painting to also represent that when you become one, you become more than what you were before. You know, you become something that, that's not, you know, you're like half lion, half man, <laughs> <laughs> half right. woman. <laughs> right, right, right. At this point, you know. But um, she's definitely adding more to what he is you know they're definitely becoming more than what they are individually you know they're they're going to another stage of of spirituality and you know and or physicality you know they're entering another realm of being one exactly just no matter the hardship you know yeah the like puzzles do fit if you almost. see she she's she's at peace right. you know she is not fighting she is not crying she is at peace, and she is in her man's arms. <laughs> I almost got some type of sexual content right here. He's <laughs> definitely in his pants. <laughs> nah, <that's fine. laughs> nah it's, but it's a beautiful piece, and I like it. Thank you. Um, it's very calm, and um, it's soothing. And I like this, like, the beauty is finally calm with the beast type of mm -hmm. feeling and everything. The colors are amazing, and, and the contrast it's very clear between the two elements from the foreground from the background. Thank you. Well, yeah, I like it. Thank it looks you. really good. Thank you. It yeah. was a, this is, this is actually a really old portfolio. I did it when I was a lot younger, um, a lot more naive of how I wanted to do paintings and how I wanted to perceive my paintings. So this is like a prototype um, to what I do now. Now I do a, a whole lot bigger paintings and um, they still tell stories you know, uh, for sure. But I believe that this was my break on showing me that if I wanted to really do something, I can. That's awesome. Yeah. So Can how old were you when you made this? When I made this, let's see, I am 21. 
it's like four years ago. Four years How old ago. are you now? I'm 25. Oh, wow. So it's about 20. So young. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> but yes, I was, uh, I was, and you might not think that's young to be like, oh, you know, some people paint better than you or whatever, but like I said, no one's going to tell my same story or give the image of a story. Like, it's, it's like, you know, right. it's like reading different kinds of comics. Do you follow <laughs> different artists out there and stuff? What inspire you to, like, you know, first get into art and everything like that? Um, let's see. And painting. I don't, unfortunately, I don't follow a lot of artists. No. It's not that I don't want to or that I feel some type of sketchy way. Or, um, it's just, to me, it's more of a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I see it as a hobby, you know, and then it's, it eventually turns out into a hobby. I can, you know, potentially have potential with it, you know, like if I really wanted to, I could do something with it. Um, so that's why it hasn't, you know, I haven't really forced myself or really pushed that extra limit to, you know, go all out and be as this detail and be as a specific coloring and how I'm making it. I've just been having fun with it, you know, and, um, and so that's why I haven't seen anybody. I do see a lot of art. I, I'm really big in graffiti art. I def if anything, I definitely follow more graffiti <laughs> art than regular art. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. And um, and I do like seeing other people's art because it gives me um, opportunity to learn, you know, on how I can change what I did or what I didn't like about mine, or and how I can pursue something like that, or really dedicate myself into learning on how to do something another artist does oh wow that's awesome yeah. cool cool beans that is amazing yeah. uh just this amazing work are you getting like any clients out there like want to buy your work and everything or customers who yes where can we find your work and stuff at so um i do have i do have clients i do want to um, buy some of my work. Unfortunately, I haven't put any of my smaller pieces out because I do have more smaller pieces besides these that are in actual canvases. But um, I have not put them out for sale yet. Um, unfortunately, they will be put up for sale. I will be having about at least three more up for sale that are about 34 to 26 size. Uh, those will be done shortly. You can always find the information on mgmust.com or you can email me at mgmust at gmail.com to set up a canvas or anything you'd like to be done on a canvas for a specific price, for a more custom price. Yes. All right, guys, I just want to go ahead and talk about procrastination. Uh, I know everybody does it. I do it myself, but not um, at home. You turn on some TV, like, man, I got to watch that episode of Power. That Power, <laughs> man, <laughs> it's super good, but not. But, you know, sometimes you got to cut that out and everything like that and you know get to business and everything mm -hmm. um, work is not going to wait on itself or not so well, what do you think about procrastination and everything like that I have to say I'm definitely a procrastinator oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I love as much as I love making time for my art and you know finding time for my art I always find myself doing something else like here I am <laughs> 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 but um but sometimes, like, it's last minute, you know, right? When I don't have the time to do it, I squeeze in the time and I start pulling out brushes and whatever, knowing I only got 20 minutes to paint, oh you gosh. know, versus a day where I have completely off, you know, and I can use the entire day for painting. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, or I could be playing music on my laptop and then just like, oh, I want to watch this video. <laughs> it's like, but my paint's going to dry. <laughs> but I want to watch the video, you know, so. Yeah. I'm definitely guilty of procrastination. Yeah, I'm super guilty of it and everything. Well, I'm not. I don't you disagree don't with you guys. Oh, no, you're cause, not for No, because when I was growing up, I tried to. But mm -hmm. my mom... She tried to. <laughs> my mom was like, she was that person that was on us. Like, as soon as we came home from school, she'd be like, nope, go sit at the table, go do your homework. I'm like, but mom, I want to watch TV. No, you do your homework first, and then you get all your homework done. Then you can watch TV. So growing up, my mom just, you know, always put that on us, like, do your homework first, and then you can do whatever. So I was always doing my homework, even, like, in high school, did my work. Everybody be like, oh, did you do your homework? Like, if I already did, I've been did it, you know. And, like, and they'd be stressed. And then even in college, definitely in college. I procrastinated, like, one time in college, and I, I just, it threw me all off because <laughs> I don't never procrastinate. I get, I get things done ahead of time, like, 
professor be like, okay, a project is due at the end of December. I'll get my project done before December is here. Like, I'll mm. get my work done, and then when I'm done with my work, I start my project. So I wouldn't be all going all crazy like everybody else would. Like, I'd be sitting in a library just nice and calm, and everybody else in the <laughs> library like, oh, my gosh, Shimon, I got to do this, I got to do this. Why are you so calm? I'm like, because I finished it all. And they'd be like, really? I'm like, yeah. Okay. So it's like, I don't procrastinate that. One time I did, it, I was like, I wonder, I wonder why. Why everybody go crazy? So like, <laughs> I don't procrastinate. I like to get the, the things done ahead of time and right one time. So I just right, there you, guys, go, you guys, I can help you guys out with that procrastination. You yeah. should, you yeah. should definitely. Yeah. Especially, I have a guilty conscience. When I was younger, like I love playing video games, but I never did mm-hmm. my homework. And let me tell you something. I always felt guilty playing video games without doing my homework. So I was just would not play video games. <laughs> or do my homework. I never did anything because what? I'd feel guilty and then I'm just like, fine, I'm just not going to play because I'm not going to do my homework. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's yeah. I got by though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys a little, some lessons on procrastination yes. for you guys. <laughs> what games were you playing back then? Oh. It made you like, all right, I ain't doing anything. I, I, used, to, I used to game so hard. <laughs> I'm not Game, even gonna, yeah. Oh God, gamer chick. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, in twenty at the end of twenty eleven, I got hit by a car. Oh. So I was I was out of work for a whole year. Um, so I did a whole lot of gaming. There was nothing to do. I was in my house all the time. I was getting cabin fever, you know, from not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's like you just can't go anywhere. You literally can't go anywhere. You're crippled. Like, <laughs> it's like you're not going anywhere. You still got a neck brace and you got a walker. Like sit your ass. <laughs> so. Um, I did a lot of gaming. I played a lot of Call of Duty. Like I would buy other games like Fallout or or Borderlands or anything, but I would always just play the same game. It was Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty. And I was so good at it. <sighs> it was so good at it. Oh my god. Yeah, and um I had, you know, a couple female friends and we would just knock it out the park and all the boys would be mad and they would be like, go to the kitchen. I'd be like, who said I'm not eating your sandwich right now? Yeah, you know? <laughs> uh, man. I, Call of Duty is good and everything like that, but now I'm kind of like, you know, bored of the Call of Duty yeah. franchise since they come out one every year and everything like that. And I know I um, parascate about, you know, playing video games like, uh, what's the game called? Taken. I've been taken a lot, so... <laughs> Taken seven, definitely like you know grabs my attention and everything like that. And it's awesome. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely love video games. Yeah, me too. You know, I haven't played in like a long time though, so it's like it's something new to me. When they're like, "We want to play a video game," I'm like, "Okay," and I'm like, "Okay, what I do again?" Like <laughs> they're like really drawn. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like I haven't played in such a long time. You got you got these new Nintendo thingies and stuff like that new. And it's like, okay, how do I do this? Like, what button do I press? And where where am I going? And, you know, stuff like that. But I'm always working out in school and stuff like that. So video games, it's like out of the question. I don't procrastinate, so, you know. Yeah. I'm, only if I'm working night shifts. You know? <laughs> so, Javon, tell us who you are and what you're all about. You modeling and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, tell us about the modeling world. What's oh. that all about? Well, I first started back in maybe like 2013 when I moved back from Arizona and I was going to Damon. Now, mind you, when I was younger, everybody told me like I should, you know, start modeling and I didn't really, you know, agree with them. I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't think I'm, you know, pretty enough. Uh, no, I'm not going to model. Like my, my one friend from church, he always tried to get me in and, and my mom as well. And I'm like, no, nope. nope. I'm not doing it. You see the models are pretty, you know, they're tall, skinny, blah, 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 you know. So at school, they're, they're having an audition for, you know, a fashion show. And everybody's running up to me, like, oh, oh my gosh, you should go do it. I'm like, no, nope, I got work. <laughs> I got class work to do that. No, you don't. Why are you standing here? I'm like, oh, because I'm taking a break. <laughs> they're like, well, why are you taking your break? Go up there and audition. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go do it. So I went up there to go audition, and they were like, all right, you got the part. Just um, come to practice. I'm like, I'm like, really? That was it? I'm like, yeah, you're great. Just come to practice, <laughs> and you know. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I got nervous. I'm like, I got the part, now I gotta come to practice. And I'm like, I, I don't know if I should do this. 
I went to practice and, you know, practicing with all the other people. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, everybody else is so much, you know, prettier. And, you know, I'm just looking at everybody else. And they're like, no, just focus on yourself, you, you. And I'm like, okay. Then the fashion show comes up, and I'm, I'm definitely nervous because I got to go on stage. It's my first time ever doing it. Everybody else have done fashion shows before and everything like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go, here we go. And I go up there, I do my thing. At the end of the show, my friend from church was actually there, and he brought – couple more other people and they're like oh my gosh you were great uh, you want to do my fashion show too and all this great I'm like really I'm like but that's my first time ever you know doing a fashion show they're like oh you were great you, you killed it I'm like <laughs> oh okay so then that's when I start you know doing more fashion shows and stuff like that and um I enjoyed it like I actually enjoyed doing fashion shows and photo shoots and things like that so it was a blessing and then I did like fell off a little bit because of work it was so much and you know I haven't been on Facebook to like you know get the memos and stuff like that so I haven't done any fashion shows but I still do like photo shoots here and there but I do want to get back into you know the fashion shows and doing the runway thing because I loved it and it was a, a lot of energy there and you know I feel like I should have done this a long time ago now since I am doing it but back then I was younger and you know insecure about myself so you know but now I'm here, and I just want to I want to show people, young girls especially, that, you know, they can do anything they want, and you shouldn't have low self-esteem about yourself. Like, mm -hmm. if, you know, if someone tells you you're great for this or great for that, you should go ahead and do it and, you know, have confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely. That's crazy. So you used to do modeling yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was some time back. Um, I've, as of right now, I'm, like, falling off. Um, this is like the first time I've fallen off from it. Mm. Um, but back in the day, yeah, we used to do some modeling. I used to go to a studio in, where was it? Um, it's up here in university. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to a studio or at a SEPA gallery as well and do photo shoots all the time. And I oh, would wow. have the, um, I would wear the corset with the masks or I would do the little Indian look and I would have the little, you know, and just... So creative, like, <laughs> yeah, we do. photography and yeah, anything like that? Yeah, we would do more on a creative photography um, or, like, a pirate shoot or things like that. Not, like, it was modeling, but it wasn't, like, to, like, the modeling aspect of, like, an ideal model, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it definitely did have that aspect to it, you know, and then we've done some work together, and then we're going to do some more work together, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I can fall back into that. And yeah, it's actually, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely a lot of energy to have, um, a lot of confidence to have. I feel like you gotta be very charismatic, uh -huh. you know, and go out there and be open about what you wanna do and the poses you wanna do and how you wanna come off of as a model. And how, like, just looking the way you're looking, the photo you're, you know, performing or shooting for is gonna give you all the energy you need. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, yeah. I'm gonna make you feel looking at me. <laughs> you always have somebody come with you when you all do your um, photography with a photographer I, and I've, I've done some, like, with on my them. own, per, you know, like, photography. I've had some friends with me. To be honest, I didn't do, like, I did a half-naked um, photo shoot. And I had to have one of my personal friends with me because I was not about to do this by myself <laughs> yeah. with the photo shoot, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, you know, a homegirl Raven, mm -hmm. she was there and she she had a blast, you know. But I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for her being there. Oh, of course. right, yeah, I agree with you on that. Like, I don't really have people come with me to my photo shoots or whatever. But like, if it was something like that, I would have somebody to come with me to, so I feel more comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, doing that. But yeah, I I agree. Do you have any, like, bad moments, like, tripping or falling through a photo I, shoot or, you actually, know, Actually, like... Runway? I have not fell. Like, you haven't fell yet? Yeah, and I thought that no. my first experience when I first did my fashion show, I thought that was going to happen to me. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I, I, I never did a fashion show before. I'm a trip. I'm fall. Like, and <laughs> I didn't. And one of the girls that, you know, actually were there that were more experienced actually did. She the one that, you know, it felt embarrassing. You know, she fell and she was mad. But, like, in any of my fashion shows, I didn't, you know, fall or trip or anything like that. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And I barely wear heels. So like, <laughs> I haven't, done, I haven't so. done a fashion show yet, but I'm telling you, I can rock heels. Right, Stilettos, yeah. like, pointy as heck, like, thick, pointy, fat wedges. I could do it. I could walk. I could run. I could, like, them 
stripper shoes. I could do all oh, of that. God. I've done it. I've gone to the Rock Kids <laughs> concert on them. I've gone to the uh, Public Enemy concert with them and the DMX concert. I broke my heels, but it was popping. Yeah. I looked popping. I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm not afraid of the shoes. Yeah, me neither. I'm not. Even though sometimes, like, I'm, a, I I'm, a, <laughs> I'm on my feet a lot lately at work, so, like, sometimes I really can't. But, like, I can do shoes anytime, any day. But, like, when I'm at work and I'm on my feet all day and then I got to put on heels and my feet, is, my feet are like, what? Like, one time I auditioned for a fashion show right after I got off of work and my feet were like, what are you doing? Like, can you go home and, like, relax your feet? Like, I, it felt like I was going to fall, but I caught my grip before I even started. But, like, when, when you're on your feet all day, don't try to put on no heels See, and walk. That, that's not my problem. My problem is how I wear heels so much that I end up having bandages, bruises, cuts. Like, my feet look super beat up because I'm wearing constantly heels and bandaging right. <laughs> you know so you, if I take my shoes off you'd be like what happened to you <laughs> I had to run the bus was leaving me <laughs> <laughs> so the bus don't wait on nobody <laughs> right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what advice would you give like different models out there men or women what not to like get a gig and for you know the modeling world and everything well, first, you got, I know you have to have a portfolio. That's what I'm trying to work on, you know, get your portfolio ready. And if you don't have, like, the confidence in yourself, you know, just the go out scared. there. Yeah, just go, go out there and, you know, just do you and get advice from other people. Like, I didn't have the confidence in myself, and a lot of people kept on telling me, oh, I should model, I should model. And I was just like, no, 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 I didn't want to do mm -hmm. it because I didn't have the confidence. But, like, you, if you have a little self-esteem, like, build that up and – take people advice and you know make it more positive so All right, i feel cool. that no one should you know um, everybody should try out for they want to try there is no weight limit to be a model there is no confidence limit to be a model there is no outfit limit to be a model i've seen people that have modeled out of um thrift stores or you know to you know banana republic or h&m like if you have it if you have the style if you have the energy if you have that Fold that, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. exactly. That. <laughs> you know, do it, just do it. You mm -hmm. know, the confidence is what makes you beautiful. Right. You know, insecurity is what makes you ugly. When you think you don't, when mm -hmm. you can't, when you're just like, you know, but when you can, even if you look bad, like that smile, that energy, that's what's gonna move you forward. And body you shaming know? and all that good stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, right. Yeah. Body shame just, yourself. just have the confidence. Yeah. Like, just be confident in yourself, no matter what anybody says. Clothes don't make you. You make the clothes. Right. <laughs> well, technically you don't. Oh, right. But still, <laughs> like, see, growing up, I, I had low self esteem because I was dark skinned. But, like, it doesn't, it shouldn't matter what your skin color is. You know, you just go out there. And I've seen some beautiful dark skinned girls out there. So I'm like, and I'm, I was like, really, and I have low self esteem about myself. So it's like, you know, go for it. Like, all right cool all right so yeah that is awesome so um yeah that concludes the today's podcast and everything like that thank you so much yeah, for no, thank you so much for having joining, me joining sharing javon thank you um yeah. come back next time mm -hmm. for the cast talk bye guys bye take it easy keep your chin up <laughs>